Hello, welcome to the Villages Florida. My name is David. I'm a realtor with Florida Realty Investments and I can be reached at davidisinflorida at gmail.com. Every week we take a look at the real estate market and specifically at the Villages real estate market. We produce this show every Monday. Make sure you check the date to ensure you're getting the most recent information. If you're looking to buy a home in the Villages and you're trying to find a good deal in an area that interests you, or you're trying to sell your home and you're trying to maximize your return in a reasonable period of time, please reach out to me at davidisinflorida at gmail.com. Be happy to help you or research any property that you have an interest in. One point to note, all of this information is drawn from the multiple listing service. It does not include any properties that are listed on the Villagers internal listing site, the VLS. For that reason, if you are looking to buy a home in the Villagers, you might consider employing two brokers, one who can show you properties on the VLS and one who can show you properties on the MLS. Without both, you will not be able to see all properties that are available for sale. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at what's happening this week. This week, we have good news and bad news. I'll reveal it all to you as we go forward. Uh, the chart that we uh, used as a headline last week is improved this week, but other charts are showing signs of deterioration, although there are still signs that things might be improving. So now let's look in depth at what's happening this week. As always, we start off by taking a look at what's happening with interest rates. Interest rates obviously are very much a factor in what the value of real estate is. And we look at the 10-year government bond yield, which, as you might know, is the bond yield that most closely tracks the mortgage rate. And looking at this graph on which every bar is a day, you can see that we are still near the recent highs, which are 20-year highs, I believe. The 10-year government bond rate has increased from under a half a percent to almost 5% over the last two years. I don't think the full effects of that have been felt uh, in the real estate market. And another thought that might be even more concerning is that historically, whenever there was unrest in the world, money flowed into the safety of US Treasury bonds and bills and notes. Rates heading higher over the last week certainly seems to indicate that that might no longer be true. What that means long term, what that means in macro terms, I'll leave it for you to decide, but it is concerning. Let's take a look now at what's happening in the villages itself. Here we look at all village listings, which this week, number 319, about the same as the 321 that was in effect last week, markedly higher than the 231 listings that we had the same week last year. Currently, listings in the villages range from $166,250 to just below $2.7 million. Here we look at all of the listings broken down by price segment and by week. You can see how many properties were available in every price segment every week. And this week in the most active price segment, the three to $500,000 range, there are 194 properties for sale. This is one of the graphs that is good news. We're looking at the median listing price per square foot for all listings in the villages. The graph is a four week average, but the figures you see are actual numbers. The 263.81 is the current median listing price per square foot for all listings in the villages, up from 261.59 last week and down from the 272.82 that was in effect the same week last year. This graph gives us some perspective as to how long homes are staying on the market. This is the median time on the market for all listings. The graph is showing you a four week average. The actual numbers are 39 days median time on the market for all listings, an improvement from the 45 days of last week uh, and about the same as the 41 days that was in effect the same week a year ago. This graph is one of the bright spots. We're looking at how many listings have been on the market for 100 days or longer. Currently, 67 out of the 319 listings meet that criteria, which is only 21%. Improvement from the 24% that we saw last week and vastly improved from the close to 30% that we saw at the beginning of August. Here we look at new listings and homes that went pending. This is the graph that gave rise to the shocking graph of last week, which is improved, obviously, this week as you look at this graph. 
we're looking on the graph at a four week average of the numbers, whereas the numbers on top of the graph are actual numbers. So new listings this week, number 25 compared to 42 last week and 29 the same week a year ago. Homes that went pending over the last seven days, number 38 compared to only 21 for the week prior and 28 for the year before. Obviously, with the number of new listings falling week over week and the number of homes going pending rising dramatically week over week, the situation has improved. Obviously, with the number of new listings decreasing and the number of homes going pending increasing, this graph from last week is improving. This shows a four-week average of the homes entering the market and leaving the market every seven days i.e. homes that are going pending every seven days are leaving the market and homes that are new to listed every seven days are entering the market. This graph gives us some perspective as to what that balance is and it is good to see that there has been some rebound. This is a look at the homes that entered the market over the last week. We can see the number of homes broken down by price segment. In the most active price segment, the three to $500,000 range, there were 17 new listings last week. Here we take a closer look at the 38 homes that went pending last week. Here we're looking at the price per square foot that they were last listed at. 245.56 is the number, a big decrease from the previous week when it was 259.44 and decreased from the 257.72 that was in effect for the same week last year. Keep in mind that this graph is showing a smooth four-week average. This shows us the median time on the market for the homes that went pending over the last seven days. It was 59 days compared to 29 days a week ago and compared to 23 days for the same week a year ago. Keep in mind that this graph is only showing you a four-week moving average. Let's hope that that time on the market for homes going pending is not foreshadowing of bigger problems ahead. This graph is showing us the price change for the homes that went pending over the last seven days. They had a median price reduction of 5.39% compared to a median reduction of only 5.19% the week before. And this compares to a reduction of 3.63% for the homes that went pending the same week a year ago. And before we turn our attention to the homes that sold and closed last week, let's take one last look at the homes that went pending last week. We're looking at the number of homes that went pending within seven days of being listed. Last week, it was six out of the 38 homes that went pending, which is 16%, down from the 19% that we saw the week before. And another data point, perhaps pending home sales, is the leading indicator of demand here in the villages. And now we look at the homes that sold and closed last week. They numbered 25 compared to 30 the week before and compared to 22 for the same week a year ago. The homes that sold and closed ranged in price from $236,850 to a million nine. And even though this graph is a smooth four-week average, it certainly appears as if sales are continuing to slow. This graph is showing us the median price per square foot realized on the homes that sold and closed over the last seven days. The graph is a smooth four-week average, but the actual numbers for last week, homes that sold and closed had a median price per square foot of 256 a foot, identical to the week before down very marginally from the 263 that was in effect the same week a year ago. Here we take a look at how long the homes that sold and closed last week were on the market. Uh, median time was 28 days compared to 20 days for the week prior, and not quite as strong a market as the 15 days that was in effect a year ago. This graph is encouraging though, because obviously uh, the shorter the time on the market, the stronger the market. This is a more in-depth look at the homes that sold and closed last week, broken down by price segment and by weekly activity. As you can see in the most active price segment, the three to $500,000 range, the number of homes that sold and closed last week was 19. Here's another perspective and something we've just started doing recently, which is giving you a perspective on how these purchases are being financed. The brown line at the top is total sales. We only have monthly data until four weeks ago. The blue line is the number of cash sales, and you can see the legend below. 
It is interesting to note that even though the percentage of homes that sell for cash is higher than any other financing method, the number of sales in total does seem to be declining. This graph is a summary of the previous graph, showing us what percentage of the sales were to cash buyers. As I said, the data is monthly until uh, four weeks ago, but it seems as if the percentage of cash buyers seems to be increasing. And our last look at all listings. This time we're looking at what percent of listings have reduced their asking price from the original listing price. This week, an improvement. We're still below half of all listings. We're down to 48.9%. Marginal improvement from the 48.91 of last week. But improvement from the 51.52% of listings that had a price decrease the same week last year. And this is another graph that has a positive slant. It is the percentage of the decrease for the listings that have decreases. And you can see continual improvement basically since the end of July. The median percentage decrease for all listings is down to only a 4.06% decrease from a 4.19% decrease the week before and an improvement even from the 4.27% decrease that was in effect a year ago. So that concludes this week's look at the Villages real estate market. If you're interested in buying a home and are trying to get a good deal, or you're trying to sell your home and are trying to maximize your return on a reasonable period of time, please contact me at davidisinflorida at gmail.com. Be happy to answer any questions you have or help you in any way I can. Hope to hear from you. Take care.